I'd like to thank Babbel for sponsoring today's video. Hang with me for just 60 seconds and I'm going to tell you how you can learn a language and get six months of your Babbel subscription for free. Babbel's the number one language app in the entire world with over 10 million subscribers. Babbel uses real people, native speakers, to teach us how to speak new languages. This is language for real life, my friends. Babbel even offers live classes through Babbel Live. You can add live classes to your existing subscription or for an additional fee, just subscribe to them as a standalone product. This is a language experience tailored to you. My kids asked me recently if I would teach them Spanish because they want to be able to talk to our neighbor who was born in Mexico. Heck yeah, let's do it. 15 hours of Spanish on Babbel has proven to be as effective as a semester of college Spanish. What? This makes learning possible for anyone. Vamos. Right now, like today, if you subscribe to Babbel for six months, they'll give you six months totally free. Just click the link below the video. Homeschool moms, I'm talking to you. Homesteaders, this is for you. Sign up for just six months with Babbel and get six full months for free. Don't dream of that language anymore. Learn to speak it. When I was 11, my mom lent me one of her flower gardens. And it was a bed that kind of bordered next to our pool. It was lined in cinder blocks and she had filled it with a few evergreens and a flowering cherry tree and some succulents. We used to spend our Saturdays as a family out gardening and my mom had created all of these beautiful garden beds around our house and I found such interest in it. I would be out there with her digging in the dirt while my dad mowed the lawn that she let me one of these garden beds and she let me be its caretaker. I took a lot of pride in this space that she lent me. And I remember going out there day after day, just raking the soil so that it would look really fresh and clean. And I would pull out the weeds and I planted it with marigolds and with sunflowers. And this was my garden. This was my first created space. So after those early years of tending to that little flower garden, I ended up working in a flower shop. I started there when I was 16. And I spent the next decade of my life working in this beautiful little European inspired flower shop. There, I learned about hundreds of different varieties of flowers. My mentor was so patient with me and she took me through and gave me eyes to see these flowers and all their uniqueness. She would help me to focus on their little fuzzy stems or a unique petal that was shaped in an odd way or a little tendril that was curling up towards the sun. Not only did she teach me the varieties of flowers and to have eyes to see these things, but she also taught me a lot about design, about color and about composition and how to complement pieces and how to complement texture and gave me this whole design foundation to build from.
Not only did this time in the flower shop teach me about flowers and their names and their colors and their smells, but it also taught me about creative expression. To me, I found flower design and time with these beautiful things a complete release. So during my years of working in this flower shop, I bought my first camera and it was a Canon AE-1. It was a film camera for those of you who remember that type of thing. And it was the same camera that my mom had. So she taught me how to begin to use this camera, how to load film and roll up the film when you were done. She taught me just some general settings of how to, you know, adjust things with lighting or adjust things with movement. And her and I would go out with our family up into the mountains and we would take pictures of landscapes and of mountain rivers and of wildflowers and of family. And it was this really beautiful time of getting to learn to use this equipment to see what I was seeing through my eyes. And if you guys ever had a film camera, you know the thrill of sending off that roll of film to your developer and then getting it back and that rush of excitement to see if what you created in your head actually came to fruition on the film. So years later, after about five years at the flower shop, I ended up going backpacking through Europe with my flower mentor. And we went through France and Italy and Spain together. We went to all these cathedrals and the Eiffel Tower and the Louvre and all these beautiful places. And then when we landed in Spain, we scrolled back through my camera. I had a little digital pocket camera that my mom had lent me. Um, so this was just when digital photography was beginning to sort of take hold. And we were scrolling back through and we realized that my camera was just full of little gardens and flowers and flora and fauna of the places that we'd seen and food. And while everyone else's cameras were filled with statues and beautiful buildings. Mine was a little bit more finite than that. Of course, that camera and those photographs never actually made it back because I was pickpocketed while we were in Barcelona. And of course they took the camera. But I remember distinctly looking at them and thinking, man, we all have eyes to see things so differently. And for whatever reason, this is what my eye sees. So here we are almost 15 years later and I find myself on these two and a half acres where our cottage is, where my whole world exists. My children, my husband, my work, my farm animals, and my gardens. It feels in many ways like more goodness and more beauty than I can almost bear to take in. I have been praying for this spring season to come and for new life to burst forth from the ground. And it has, and it feels so good and so rich and so <laughs> nearly impossible to drink in because there's so much of it. Without even knowing it, through all these years, I've been preparing for this moment. So I've been blogging for the last decade over on the Elliott Homestead. And in this time, I've learned the ins and outs of photography. I've learned my camera upside down and sideways, studying my craft of photography and composition and of color and really honing in on what it is that I want to share with the world. I've shared this garden with so many of you out there and the hope in all of this is that I've helped you to see the beauty and the small details that exist in this ordinary life. I was recently antiquing and I saw this plaque that said, not every lake dreams of being an ocean. And I felt that really deeply because I think there was a period of my career and of my life where I really wanted to grow my influence and grow my impact on the world. And that's really backtracked now where I don't seek to greatness in any of those things anymore. I seek to greatness in this life that I've been given right here on our little cottage. I seek to raise my children well, and I seek to love my husband well, and I seek to take really good care of the gardens and of the animals that we've been given, and ultimately to just get better at my craft and what I'm offering the world. And maybe that's never something great, and maybe it is. 
but that I can look back and say, I've honestly done this well. I've done a good job. That's what I'm striving for. My goal ultimately is to continue to train my eyes to see the beauty in the world around us. So last year, I began the task of creatively capturing all of these things that were in my mind. And I called it my studio work because I didn't know what to call it. I didn't even know how it was going to come out, but I was deeply inspired by my decades of love for the garden and of food and of photography. Like how could I channel this into something that accurately felt reflective of what was going on in my mind, what I was seeing inside of my heart. I needed to find a way to capture that beauty. And so the studio time was born. So Stu gifted me a book by Francis Palmer called Life in the Studio. And that is when all of a sudden it clicked for me. This was going to be my new work. Photography was going to be the new outlet for what was going on inside. It felt like a culmination of all of these things that you couldn't see how it was being woven together until all of a sudden you flipped the tapestry around and there it was. I needed to work. I needed to express these feelings that were going on and to capture it and to seize it in that moment and find a way to bring it into the world, to bring those feelings out into fruition. So here we are in the studio. The biggest hurdle for me to get over as a creative was to allow myself to say, I am creating art and I am an artist. And I don't know if I'll ever be able to speak these words and not feel like a complete poser. Maybe that never goes away. Maybe every artist feels that in some capacity, but regardless, here I am <laughs> creating this work, improving with every photograph and ultimately clawing my way towards this pinnacle of beauty that I am longing to share with the world from what we've created here. Of all the work that I've done, I don't think I have ever felt so settled and so satisfied in what I'm doing. Through all of this work, the gardens, the food, the, you know, the vegetables, um, the love for that old world crusty feel, it's all coming into these photographs. This, this is me as an artist, putting my art out into the world, decades in the making. And I can see that now. So though I will create this art, whether it's out in the world or not, because it is such a form of release for me, I want people to see it. So I have created a new site if you would like to check it out. 
The site is shayelliot.com, and there you will see the galleries for the various seasons as they evolve and the photographs that come from that. The prints are all there for you to be able to enjoy or to be able to purchase if you would like to bring them into your home. We work with a really wonderful printer in Seattle named Carl, who makes sure that each of these prints is done perfectly from his studio. They're on a museum quality paper that's completely matte and shipped to you flat. So when you get the print, you instantly are able to add that wonderful cottage farm inspired feel from my studio onto your wall. The art prints are ultimately a beautiful and tangible reflection of the care and the love that went into bringing them into fruition. These prints are me. These prints are a photograph from the inside of my soul as an artist. And I hope that you love them. Visit shayelliot.com to view the gallery of images. And creatives, artists out there, maybe posers like me, let's create anyway and see that beauty. Whether or not we feel like we're good enough or whether we're worried about being criticized or not, let's just create anyway. There's so much beauty out there for us to capture. I hope you love the new photography.